Hello, and welcome to this episode of Three Things from Equus, the podcast that helps you prioritize your horsekeeping efforts for the month ahead. I'm Equus Content Director, Lori Prins. And I'm Content Manager, Christine Barakat. The time between Thanksgiving and Christmas doesn't just fly by, it evaporates. One minute you're carving a turkey, and the next you're dragging a dried out Christmas tree to the curb. Getting basic life tasks done can be a challenge. Throw in taking care of horses in the mix, and it can get a little overwhelming. At this busy time of year, it's okay to make your grooming sessions a bit shorter, or perhaps spend a little less time cleaning your tack, but there are a few chores you don't want to let go because the consequences would be dire. The first of these crucial tasks is making sure your horse stays hydrated this month, and all winter long. Hydration this time of year isn't just about a horse not being thirsty. It's the key to preventing winter colic. There's a proven connection between reduced water intake and increased incidence of impaction colic this time of year. Here are a few tips to ensure your horses keep drinking this winter. First of all, keep buckets and troughs ice free. Don't assume your horse will break through even a thin layer of ice to get a drink, or that he'll drink water that contains chunks of ice. Many horses won't do either. Invest in an insulated bucket or an immersible heater to keep your horse's water from freezing. If you have automated waterers, check them daily. Frozen lines, electric short circuits, or simple mechanical failure can cause an automatic waterer to run dry, and you may not notice it until your horse is dangerously dehydrated. Even though you aren't dumping and filling buckets this time of year, make it a habit to check the function of every automatic waterer on your property every day. You can also feed warm, soupy mashes to get your horse to consume extra water. Skip the traditional brand, however. Suddenly adding that to your horse's diet can lead to colic. Instead, wet your horse's usual feed with enough hot water to soften it into a moist mash. Feed it once it's cooled slightly, but well before it begins to freeze. Just like your passion for horses never fades, neither does Horse Week's brilliant content. Join us each week on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern for new Horse Week favorite re-releases between now and Christmas. Riders and horse lovers of every level and discipline will enjoy profiles of incredible equine athletes, storytelling that celebrates the horse-human bond, heartwarming tales of horse heroics, and advice from world-class trainers. Tune in from the barn, office, or the comfort of your couch. Equine Network is making it easy to watch from any smart device. Visit horseweek.tv or the Equine Network YouTube channel for more information. Let's talk about holiday decorations next. That's a fun topic. A barn with Christmas lights and stockings on each stall is festive, but you need to make sure that your decor isn't putting the horse's health at risk. Make sure, for example, that live wreaths and garlands contain no toxic plants. Yew branches, for example, are often used in holiday decorations and they're highly toxic. Just a mouthful can kill a horse. If you don't know exactly what's in a live wreath or garland, don't hang it at the barn. Don't even discard it on your property. Give it to a friend who doesn't have horses. If you'll be using holiday lights, make sure the bulbs and cords are in good shape. Then hang them well out of a horse's reach and unplug them at night. Also, hang stockings out of reach of horses. Not only will a curious horse destroy the stocking, but any fabric or plastic he ingests in the process could lead to colic or choke. Finally, be cautious about sleigh bells. As festive as they might be, jingling bells can spook horses who've never heard them before. Acclimate your horse to their sound slowly. The last topic we want to touch on today is an important but often overlooked way to keep horses warm in winter weather. Of course, blankets and shelters will go a long way to keeping horses warm, even when temperatures plunge well below freezing. But what you feed can also help. Specifically, hay can help keep a horse warm, much more so than grain. This is because hay is digested more slowly than grain, giving it a longer metabolic burn time and producing more internal heat. Feeding your horse hay, and lots of it, will go a long way to keeping him warm. Ideally, your horse will have continuous access to hay during the winter months. That's not always logistically feasible, but it's a good goal to shoot for. If you're worried about your horse gaining too much weight as a result of eating too much hay, talk to your veterinarian about adjusting the hay to grain ratio in his diet, or perhaps changing the type of hay you're feeding to avoid excess calories. And to bring this conversation full circle, make sure your horse continues to drink and stays well hydrated as you increase his hay ration. It's that dry, fibrous forage that can lead to impaction colic during the colder weather if your horse isn't drinking enough. I think that covers it for this episode. Stay warm in the saddle, everyone. Happy holidays.
The Equus Three Things Podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network. 